<laughs> Good afternoon. It's Monday the 14th of July 2014. Welcome to UK Column News. Having a few technical issues this morning, but not well, this afternoon, not to worry about that. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Gerrish, with me in the studio, Mike Robinson, and uh, average uh, day weather-wise in Plymouth, but a lot happening across the world. We're going to go straight in with what's happening with Obama. Over well, you, yes, uh, major uh, um, developments over the weekend with huge outcry in the States uh, with regard to his potential impeachment and the, uh, the sort of diversionary uh, lawsuit, which uh, Mr. Boner, the uh, uh, head of the, the, the Congress, is uh, the Speaker of the, the House, is, uh, is trying to, to divert people into instead. Um, so this was typical on, the, on Google News uh, this morning. And if we just look through some of these uh, uh, reports, uh, suing Obama so he doesn't have to be doesn't have to impeach him and so on uh, and Barack Obama's uh, attitude is really uh, and so on uh, and Sarah Palin of course uh, how much of this have you seen on the BBC well no uh, is the answer yes but well, I mean this is just a selection of a few of the of the reports over the weekend uh, um, another one from uh, the blaze here but if we uh, so it goes on <laughs> Right. But if we look back at this particular thing, we can see at the bottom a link, Explore in Depth, 1,336 more articles if you search for Obama impeachment 2014. But when you actually click on that link, what do you think you get? Probably not a lot. No articles relating to Obama impeachment 2014 were found. So what is go going on with Google's database these days? What are they doing? Well, if um, people don't want information put on Google, of course, they can ask for it to be removed, removed. if it's a bit embarrassing over sex scandals, um, abusing little boys. You get it removed if you're a pop star and you don't like the attention you're getting. You get it removed. If you're a politician, of course, you get it removed. So we're now starting to see why... There's a massive close down of libraries in UK and real books are going off the shelves and there's a drive to get in um, electronic scanning of books because you can rewrite history. That's Did, what we're watching. Didn't somebody write a book which involved something to do with uh, changing history and, and rewriting history? Well, they certainly did. Yes including the European Union on several occasions. But this is the key issue, major events, major, major events in America at the moment. But of course, we're not seeing anything in Britain. Um, just, just to remind everybody what the background of that, of course, it is the fact that Obama is just ignoring the wishes of Congress and making executive decisions which he has no power to do under the US Constitution. He is breaking the law hand over fist. We're seeing exactly the same type of uh, behavior from leaders in this country. Um, but perhaps we're not seeing the same type of uh, calls for direct impeachment. Uh, of course, the House of, House of Commons does have the power to impeach uh, anybody in this country. Slightly different meaning of the word, admittedly, but nonetheless, um, there have been calls recently that Tony Blair should have been impeached for, uh, for the Iraq war. I think uh, there's probably a number of counts that uh, our past prime ministers could be brought into the, into the, uh, the Houses of Parliament for on an impeachment charge. Yeah. Well, if we need a connection between uh, events of uh, criminal governments in uh, the USA and what's happening here in UK, uh, probably it's Boys Town. If you haven't seen that uh, video, go on to YouTube, Boys Town video, talking about the abuse of young men by the American political establishment. Well, that leads us straight into, of course, and the fact that the Express here, a very interesting article, why was Scottish Savile ignored? The Scottish government ignored calls from one, one of its own advisers to launch an investigation into a high-profile paedophile ring operating in Edinburgh. Uh, this story is worth reading. I encourage you to go to the Express and to go through this because uh, essentially we, uh, we have um, one of the key advisers to the Scottish government uh, basically reporting out reporting um, that a paedophile ring was operating in uh, in Edinburgh uh, this was 2009 and what took place absolutely nothing no investigation and um, Dr Nielsen is the lady who advises the Scottish government on child sexual abuse and she called for an investigation in April 2009 so um, if we go to the end of the article, uh, basically this is the key thing. Yesterday a Scottish government spokeswoman said they could not comment 
on individual cases, adding, anyone who has evidence of or has suffered child sexual abuse should contact the police for an investigation to be made. Uh, well, here, here's the report by the lady. She revealed that five years ago she'd uncovered an abuse network centred on convicted sex abuser Tam Patton, the late manager of the Bay City Rollers. However, her demands for an inquiry were never followed up, despite compelling evidence that dozens of boys may have had their lives ruined by the twisted pop Svengali and his powerful accomplices. Young runaways or children in care were lured in drugged and sexually abused. So here we've got direct links back into the children in care line. Uh, the paedophile ring is thought to have operated over several decades and to have included at one time or another well-known TV personalities, lawyers and police officers. So this is Scotland. And of course, what we're going to come on to directly is Robert Green, but the Scottish government saying, well, we can't comment on this. It's Extraordinary, Mike, isn't it? I am almost lost for words yeah. as this thing unfolds. So here is the man, Robert Green, imprisoned by Alex Salmon, Scottish junta, a junta which quite clearly is now there to protect paedophiles. Uh, Robert put in prison for three months and one week. He's now spent 54 days under house arrest at his home in Warrington. He's still unaware of the charges against him. And uh, what is his crime? Well, trying to protect children from paedophiles. And let's remind ourselves of how the junta system works in Scotland. Here are the three men, Alex Salmon, uh, Stephen House and Kenny McCaskill, who control politics, police and the justice system. So a little embedded image there of police state Scotland behind the razor wire. And let's remember the support from powerful law firm Levy McRae. And we've pointed out before that, of course, this law firm has its uh, fingers in all of these pies, including through to NewsQuest, which has told us they did not ban access to Robert Greene's website. But I can tell you that a NewsQuest employee told us earlier this morning that they were still unable to use NewsQuest internal computers to access the free Robert Green site. So Scotland appears now to be under the control of a few. What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing the whole organisation shy away from any uh, uh, uncovering of paedophile rings. And um, here we pointed out, of course, that Scottish Mr McCluskey uh, was on the Leveson type panel to control the press. So what's happened in Scotland clearly happening here south of the border. And uh, where does that go? Well, it leads us to this because this morning we called Nottingham Police on the 101 call line, which costs you 15 pence per minute. And we asked them if there was a further update on the missing Beechwood witness um, and this is the person who had simply disappeared after sending um, a text to UK Column. Now, we couldn't play you the, um, uh, the telephone conversation today. We are going to play it out tomorrow. Uh, quite extraordinary to hear the police simply refuse to give any information at all about an individual who they would appear to have arrested. Well, we can go a step further because shortly before we went on air, we discovered uh, what had actually happened to the Beechwood witness. Now, this is the text that came into us on Wednesday at 21.22. Please ring urgent. Something has happened and I don't trust the police and I may be locked up tomorrow. I've got to surrender with my lawyer at 12 tomorrow. It's bizarre. I've done no wrong. Please ring me. This is scary because it's not normal mail. I hope you're well. Now, in trying to follow up on this and calling the police, we couldn't get any information about what had happened. We can now tell you this, that Melanie Shaw, the Beechwood witness who suffered horrific rape and abuse at the Nottingham Children's Home, was arrested on Wednesday the 9th of July, held overnight, appeared in court Friday the 10th, and is now in Peterborough Prison. And since we spoke to her solicitor on uh, Friday, 
and they were unaware as to what happened to this uh, very, very brave lady. Uh, it would appear that she was put through the court system, presumably with some form of uh, official um, representation along the lines that Robert Green's been served. Uh, but of course, that, that is the key point. You say presumably. We have no understanding of what happened to this woman at all. We know what the ultimate outcome has been. We don't know. Was, uh, we know that Robert Green, for example, or, sorry, in fact, some other people that we know of as well have, have been involved in cases which have not been listed on the official court's lists. Was this case listed on the official court list? If it was, if it has gone through a proper judicial process, why were the police, which this is supposed to be a public judicial process, why were the police so unwilling to tell the public what had happened to this lady? Well, hiding behind uh, data protection laws, which I think everybody will agree, this was not the purpose of data protection laws, to, to permit the police to hide their act activities behind. Well, Mike, um, um, we're getting some questions uh, from the chat room, quite rightly. Uh, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye because one of the things that has happened to this very brave lady, apart from her child being taken away from her, which she believed was a means of intimidating her into silence over what she experienced and saw at Beechwood Home, um, basically um, a cooked up charge of arson has been put against this lady. Now why are we so interested in this uh, so-called arson charge? Because we are receiving reports from other cases, particularly involving social security services, so, uh, <laughs> social services, the SS, that where mothers uh, in, in the cases we're dealing with have attempted to contest social services ta uh, taking their children there have been mysterious incidences of small fires, so rubbish set alight. And in Melanie's case, all of a sudden, there was an accusation that she had helped start a fire in a neighbour's shed. No evidence, and quite mysteriously, uh, there should have been uh, CCT footage, security CCTV footage, uh, but on the time, at the time in question of this so-called arson attempt, uh, the electricity supplies to the cameras were out. So UK column remains highly suspicious that what we are seeing, and I'm going to repeat this, the abuse that this woman suffered at the home, quite incredible rapes, physical abuse, psychological abuse, torture. And now all of a sudden, what have we got? Nottingham police helping to protect her as a vital witness, no, she's lifted without, it would appear, the knowledge of her solicitor, and she is now in Peterborough Prison. Just before I allow you to come in there, Mike, let's just put up Peterborough Prison, uh, because even the BBC was able to report in 2011 that this was one of the many UK prisons where inmates feel unsafe because of the level of violence, drugs and bullying. So this is where... Uh, uh, the state puts an unbelievably vulnerable Beechwood witness into one of the most violent pr prisons in the country. So you've got a victim traumatised by rape, horrific abuse. This is not one woman's testimony. This is along with nearly 100 others. Her life gets destroyed. Clearly she's had some problems as a result of that. What do we do with her? We put her in prison. And let's look at the MPs who to date are silent on this issue. Uh, we've tried to speak to all of these MPs this morning, Vernon Coker, Lillian Greenwood and Chris Leslie. And uh, again, we're going to look to play out the telephone calls from those uh, conversations this morning. You heard one, Mike. What, what was your opinion of it? Well, none of these people knew whether or not Beechwood Children's Home was actually in their constituency. That's the case, isn't it? That is absolutely the case. We, we, we didn't know. None of them knew that, that there were 100 victims uh, coming forward. None of them seemed to have taken any interest in this case whatsoever up to date. Uh, and uh, none of them were actually prepared to, as usual, engage uh, to protect this witness. Yep. Uh, and uh, so what is the purpose of these people? They have no use to this whatsoever. And if anybody intends to vote for any of these three at the next general election, frankly, you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm going to say we're going to ask um, viewers and listeners to um, 
to really do something on this issue. Uh, we've sent um, an email to these three MPs this morning. This is what it said, a little bit small on screen. Dear Ms Greenwood, Mr Coker and Mr Leslie, I have called your constituency and Westminster offices today to establish what action you've taken as Labour MPs individually and or collectively to help the 92 victims of abuse at the Nottingham Beechwood Children's Home. The figure of 92 has been stated by Nottingham Police as Nottingham Police. Other sources now say there are over 100. May I say that I was surprised and disappointed that your staff all seemed casually unaware of this very serious child abuse case on your constituency doorstep. The abuses include rape, buggery, physical and sexual assault, psychological intimidation and a number of the child victims alleged children were murdered. Nottingham City Council and Nottingham County Council are clearly trying to buy their way out of their responsibility for protecting vulnerable young children in care with a £250,000 payout of public money for some 17 victims. Of course, the councils do not admit any liability. I would be grateful for a written press statement by close a play today on your personal positions as MPs regarding the extensive child abuse at Beechwood and your intentions to help victims protect vulnerable children and bring abusers to trial. So UK Column would like to say we now know that uh, Melanie is in a very bad prison, Peterborough prison. It is our contention that she has been put there to silence her. Um, in the future, I would predict a conviction. And uh, why would you do this to make sure that this uh, vital witness is, is not available to speak out in a credible way on the horrific abuse, abuses at Nottingham Beechwood Children's Home? So if you uh, feel as we do or feel as strongly as we do over this case, then please feel free, obviously, to contact Nottinghamshire Police, uh, Peterborough Prison, and indeed the three MPs that we've named in our broadcast today. Well, in fact, it, I mean, people need to do all those things, don't they? Because first of all, we need to make sure that Peterborough Prison understands that this lady is someone who uh, is of public interest and, uh, and that should hopefully protect her in some way. Uh, and we also need the MPs concerned to understand that to sit on the sidelines on this type of issue is not an acceptable option. Yeah. So overwhelmingly in the public interest, and that should be why we are all asking our questions. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we don't stand up for these victims who hold the key evidence as to the abuses carried out against them, then we are failing the victims and we are failing children in the UK as a whole. Well, of course, the government is simply only interested in one thing, and that's a cover up of the abuses by members of the political establishment in the United Kingdom. Uh, but have we got some good news over this lady, Mike? Yeah, it seems that uh, Butler Sloss has uh, decided that the pressure uh, which was building on her and her reputation uh, was too much, and she has decided to step down as head of the inquiry into allegations. Of course, she wasn't going to be looking into the inquiry into allegations of historical child abuse. She was going to be looking into the activities of people uh, within the establishment and what they did with dossiers missing or otherwise. Uh, and uh, But anyway, she stepped down. Uh, Downing Street, according to the BBC here, said it was entirely her decision. And they're saying that a new chairperson will be uh, appointed within days. Good luck with that one, is what I say, because uh, I would say they're going to struggle to find somebody willing to take this, this particular inquiry on. Well, of course, what we can again ask people to do is uh, whoever the next name the government puts forward um, as their man or woman uh, to carry the, carry, carry the cover up forward. Uh, it is your research, your factual information, uh, which is capable of dealing with these people. So if you've uh, been looking into um, Ms. Uh, Butler Sloss, you might look, like to look into whoever the government comes up with next. But we've already seen the spoiling exercise by the wider media and we thought we'd focus on the Daily Mail. Well, it was the Sunday Mail, in fact, uh, which had this article, Scandals of Sexminster, the Cabinet Minister who made passes at Etonians 
and the MP who paid 14 year old boys for floggings. And we've got a picture there of Viscount Drumland Rig, whose body was found in a ditch in 1894 amid rumours he was having a homosexual relationship with the Prime Minister. So, in two pages, uh, we have a very tongue in cheek, it's all a bit of naughty scandal from the 1890s. And who is the man that has put this article together? In our opinion, a very dangerous article because it deliberately uh, and in a calculated way undermines the seriousness of the paedophile abuse now being linked directly with members of the British government. Who put this article together? Well, it was none other than this man, Chris Bryant, MP for Rhonda. Meet the man the Daily Mail chooses to comment on Westminster child abuse cover-ups. Now, how can we remember this man? Well, we can remember him because here he is as he likes to see himself on the internet advertising in his underpants for gay partners. And, of course, if we look back in his history, aside from the fact uh, uh, he was connected with the church. Uh, if I just put the other line in there, uh, you will see that back in uh, 1996, um, sorry, 1998 to 2000, he was head of European affairs at the BBC. So this is the sort of man dragged out of the woodwork in order to try and undermine uh, the reports of what's happening with the children. I'm sure he knew nothing about Jimmy Savile. Well, if he knew nothing about Jimmy Savile, let's remind ourselves of his election agent, because here he is, agent of Labour MP Chris Bryant, is jailed for collecting 12,000 pictures of the most serious child pornography police had ever seen. Uh, well, of course, he knew nothing about this either. But here's the man, Stephen uh, Carnell. Uh, the 58-year-old was found with pornographic images as well as material showing sadism and bestiality. But, um, well, uh, he didn't know anything. I didn't know anything, no. And uh, the other thing we'd like to say, of course, Chris Bryant, uh, a common purpose guru. We've already reminded people that uh, he was involved, um, sorry, common purpose was involved with paedophiles um, through James um, Rennie and Matthew Byrne in Merseyside. Um, I'm afraid we've uh, made a slight mess of this slide because uh, we can't see the bottom of his uh, piece of card here, which is really the whole point of the thing. So uh, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll cover this story again tomorrow. I think it's the best thing to do. Well, should, should we just say that um, if we're looking at what's going wrong in the country, uh, bear in mind that common purpose has certainly not disappeared. Common purpose people still buried in every sector of society, government, NGOs, charities and uh, local authorities. And uh, Mike's point from this slide is, yes, this young man needs something, but you'll have to join us tomorrow to, to find, find out. out. Yeah. So this is a bit more of the uh, cover up here. And um, uh, we've got uh, Jerry Hayes, uh, the former Tory MP for Essex, 83 to 97. And he's also been writing and he's saying, well, with some of his uh, mates, uh, when he was a journalist in Westminster, uh, they did see a video which was uh, um, homosexual pornography, uh, which was apparently a grandee and an un and, uh, underage young man. Uh, let's have a look in a bit more detail. Um, he debunks a number of myths around the sexual activities of MPs saying the majority of the rumours swirling around Westminster bars were fairly flaky nonsense. He does admit that many of them watched, as was our duty, grainage footage of some identical old boy grunting over what was said to be an underage boy. Uh, but, but it could have been anyone. Uh, he says they did know about the mortuary exploits of Jimmy Savile and his penchant for amputees. But of course they didn't have any proof. And he goes on to say there was absolutely no gossip that I can remember about a paedophile ring in the heart of government. But that doesn't mean there wasn't one. So basically, what's the message from his article? Well, there was a video, but nobody could really be identified. The video, presumably just a bit of normal homosexual fun. We all have to watch these sorts of videos. 
and he's saying you can trust us, we'd have reported anything illegal. Well, well, well aside from being a journalist, um, I'm on a mission here, Mike. Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> aside from being a journalist, um, when he left Westminster in 2002, he went back to being a criminal barrister, uh, as you do, as really. You do, yeah. So, again, speak to speak to speechless, by this, really. I mean, surely if you, if you are aware of something which is even potentially criminal in nature, the first thing you do is report it to the police, but apparently not if you're a well, Westminster MP. Well, if we MP. report it to the police, they don't do anything anyway. Robert Green reported it to the police and he ends up banged up. Surely that's so, why it's doubly important for somebody with the supposed uh, um, sort of status of an MP yeah. uh, to, to report exactly that type of thing then. And uh, it's uh, being pointed out correctly in the chat room that um, Stephen Fry over the weekend, of course, was busy attacking anybody who wanted a, an inquiry into paedophile rings. Why would you attack somebody who wants to protect children? I think I know the answer. Well, let's remind ourselves again, uh, again about these women. Here we are, statements by Harriet Harman and Patricia Hewitt on the subject of the paedophile information exchange. In an annual report dated April 1976, she describes Pi in glowing terms as a campaigning counselling group for adults sexually attracted to children. Here's the new world for child abuse. You are sexually attracted to children. Uh, Hewitt then complains that Pi had recently been the subject of a, an hysterical and highly inaccurate article in the Sunday People, headlined The Vilest Men in Britain, and that was designed to foster misunderstanding and hatred. So that would be hate speech then? That would be hate speech. My goodness, we're going to have that, <laughs> that vote on us. And in 1978, the National Council for Civil Liberties submitted a briefing paper to Parliament on the upcoming Protection of Children Bill, which sought, amongst other things, to outlaw child pornogra uh, pornography. Written by Harriet Harman, the briefing advanced an extraordinary argument that images of naked children should only be considered pornographic if it could be proven that the subject had suffered. And in 1996, 76. N sorry, 1976, NCCL lobbied for the age of consent to be lowered to 10 years. And of course, what you need to go with that is incest to be legalised. And as an Australian judge uh, said last week, well... Uh, incest was okay because if there was any unwanted of children uh, as a result they could be aborted and um, in 1978 NCCL lobbied for child pornography laws to be relaxed how were they doing all of this well of course uh, this man um, in power around at the time and uh, money was being channeled uh, through the um, auspices of the Home Secretary into the paedophile information exchange and uh, we reported a, f a few weeks ago police are now investigating the organization as part of operation Fernbridge, uh, launched around the jimmy savile affair and remember a senior source on the investigation says there's evidence that members of pi were abusing children on an industrial scale mm. and if you're going to do that of course you've got to source the children where do you go for children you go where the most vulnerable children are, which is not with their parents, but it's children that the state has already taken into care so they can disappear through the system. Well, that is the state of UK. And uh, let's remember that King Cameron and William Hague are constantly standing on the world stage to lecture other countries on how to run their business. It's disgusting, and we should remember that uh, David Cameron, the man who holds ultimate responsibility, of course, for the abuse of our children. Apologies <laughs> for the noise. Uh, we appear to have some building work going on nearby, and uh, so if you're hearing if you're hearing a drill going, you so are. You are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What okay. Have you done overseas. Overseas. Mike? Well, this was an interesting article that appeared in the Independent over the weekend because uh, we've been talking about uh, the role of Prince Bandar in, in the organization of terrorism in the Middle East for quite some time. Patrick Henningsen also been discussing it uh, and uh, I'm glad to see it finally hitting the mainstream media. So on Sunday Patrick Coburn uh, published a very interesting article, here it is in The Independent, uh, and I recommend everybody goes and looks at it. It is quite long but nonetheless it's worth the effort. 
uh, it's called Iraq Crisis, how Saudi Arabia, Arabia helped ISIS take over the north of the country. And it highlights uh, some comments made during a speech by ex-MI6 head Sir Richard Dearlove. Um, and uh, he begins by saying, um, how far is Saudi Arabia complicit in the ISIS takeover of much of northern Iraq, and is it stoking an escalating Sunni-Shia conflict in, around the Islamic world? Um, and uh, he's highlighting uh, that Sir Richard Dearlove says that Prince Bandar told him uh, that the time is not far off in the Middle East, Richard, when we will be literally, sorry, when it will be literally God help the Shia, more than a billion Sunnis have simply had enough of them. And so uh, really uh, highlighting here the, the role of Bandar, and we shouldn't uh, forget that, of course, Bandar was absolutely involved up to his neck in the BAE systems fraud allegations, uh, the Al-Yamama fraud, uh, and, uh, and of course these allegations never came to court because, well, our government lost the dossier. As you do, As Mike. you do, and uh, the serious fraud office investigation had to be shut down. Um, some of those lost files were subsequently found on a cannabis farm. But they weren't water damage, though. Uh, possibly well, not, yeah. but maybe smoke damage, you don't know. Uh, but anyway, so, so Bandar, a man to keep uh, a very close eye on. And speaking of lost documents, uh, perhaps this should happen in the United Kingdom, uh, but uh, the IRS, um, of course, in the news over the last year or so, because they've been targeting... Um, certain sections of the uh, uh, Tea Party uh, with but really unlawfully targeting these people um, and the document documentation which which proved the bullying and the, the uh, illegal targeting uh, just seemed to disappear so now a federal judge has ordered the IRS to explain why these emails have been lost um, and uh, well they've been given a month to provide the evidence for what has happened to this and it seems that uh, District Judge Emmett Sullivan intends to uh, take action if he isn't satisfied by the uh, response that he gets. So perhaps we should uh, have the odd judge in this country that asking the same types of questions and being prepared to uh, stand up and be counted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, in, the, in the Ukraine, things are continuing to escalate, and uh, Ru Russia really pretty incensed by the fact that uh, the Ukrainians have been uh, being a bit careless with where they've been firing rockets, and some of these have fallen into across the border into a village on the Russian side of the border. Uh, Russia saying that they intend to not take this lying down, as it were, uh, and uh, really really just wanted to highlight the continuing escalation that Ukraine hasn't gone away. This country is uh, dissolving into civil war, as we predicted that it would. It's not really getting too much uh, coverage uh, in, in the public mind at the moment, but a uh, very serious situation. And of course, let's not forget the continuing serious situation in Gaza with Israel really um, stooping to new lows, I think. And it, yeah, it's very interesting that, again, very little reporting on this over the scale of the Israeli operation and, and, the, and the sheer level of violence. Well, if we're to believe some of the reports coming out of uh, Gaza, um, the Israelis are not only using depleted uranium uh, weapons, they're, they're again using uh, um, white phosphorus weapons, uh, but there's some reports coming out of Gaza saying that, in fact, they're patients are, are coming in with injuries that they've never seen before yeah. and they don't really know what type of weapon is being used uh, so some whether it's some extension of the EU or whatever it is right. um, um, William, William Hay conservative friend of Israel uh, yes as indeed. Uh, as 82 percent of, of the uh, Tory MP so this is inherently a biased press report because this man is biased towards Israel. He's a conservative friend of Israel. Well, of course, every nation has the right to defend itself, but I think that uh, Israel has by far and away over the last, uh, well, really since its inception, has like, over, overstepped that right many, many times. And the use of, uh, of wep you know, advanced weaponry on these people is just plain wrong. I think everybody can agree with that. Uh, but, of course, William Hague, also the person uh, campaigning to... Um, uh, avoid sexual violence as, as a weapon of war, but as we've made the point before, he's quite happy to start the wars that where these kinds of uh, things happen. So, so yeah. he's he's just a sheer hypocrite, really. So, he managed to break away from uh, strutting round uh, with the stars in America and, uh, and temporarily. Now he's on the world stage, yes. um, sticking up for Israel. Yes, um, and uh, the next piece of news is. Uh, 
Good news for the armed forces, isn't it? Isn't it? Perhaps not. Uh, David Cameron is announcing £1.1 billion of spending for the uh, military. Uh, and of course, if you read the uh, mainstream coverage of this, uh, you might think that this is great news. But of course, it's not new money. Uh, it's money that that really just hasn't been spent yet. So this is typical, more typical government well, uh, propaganda where yeah. they say they're going to spend money and they give the impression that it's new money and new a new joint long-term plan, but in fact it's just money that was sitting in a pot somewhere that they haven't spent yet. Yeah, could I just read that paragraph, because uh, I was reading it while you were chatting away there, and I just find it interesting. The Prime Minister will today announce that due to difficult long-term decisions that the government has taken and prudent budget management instilled in the mod since the balancing of the defence budget, an investment of $1.1 billion will be made in capabilities for the armed forces. That paragraph, of course, says absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. It does it in very careful language. Um, credit to the person who put it together. But if you read it, what does it actually mean? And the answer is, of course, nothing. And that's what it is supposed to mean. But it's it's supposed to have us thinking that they've said something worthwhile. That's exactly the point. And, of course, the use of the term prudent budget management uh, you have to ask, who was the last person that we knew that was using that type of language? It was Gordon, Gordon Brown, Brown, I think, yeah. Yes. The man who threw his uh, his mobile phones around if life got a bit too much for him. But here's, here's the key point. £800 million to be spent on surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance me measures. Uh, but it doesn't define whether those are going to be domestic or overseas. Um, so are, are these are these new surveillance target acquisition recon reconnaissance measures going to be uh, to, to deal with the uh, alleged domestic terrorists or what are they for? So they're getting worried about the paedophile um, evidence coming out. They're going to need uh, more surveillance on the UK population, but let's dribble it in. Right, and they're also going mm -hmm. to announce the creation of a UK Defence Solutions Centre, um, which is going to bring together... Uh, industry to develop new technologies and identify market opportunities. Market opportunities for killing people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and apparently Cameron is going to say, because of difficult decisions we've taken to tackle the deficit, we're able to make these vital investments in our defence capabilities. Just remember, this is not new money. This is not money which has been saved somewhere. So that is a direct lie. But what can Couldn't we expect? believe that at all, Mike. No. Okay, well, who else is lying? Well, the church is continually. Well, uh, actually, this is, this is a, a quite a reasonable article from Michael Nazir Ali, who's a bishop uh, in the church, really slagging off George Kerry, uh, ex-Archbishop uh, of Canterbury, of course. Um, now, this is just in time for the next reading of the Assisted Dying Bill, uh, and George Kerry has spoken in favour of it in the Daily Mail, um, and I uh, don't think there's too much to say about this. As we know, Kerry is an ex-Archbishop uh, of Canterbury, and he's nailed his colours to the mast because he's really quite mm -hmm. anti-human, uh, and that perhaps explains why he was never too concerned about the types of uh, organisation the, the church invested in in past years. Um, but in this article in The Telegraph, Bishop My Michael uh, Nazir Ali, he's attempting to demonstrate uh, that, the, that others in the church are not quite so uh, evil in their outlook, if you want to put it that way. He suggests, for example, that helping terminally ill people to, to live as long as possible is would be a much better approach than actually getting them to die as quickly as possible. Uh, and he also points out that even Kerry is concerned about the thin end of the wedge potential here uh, of this assisted dying bill extending to extending to uh, disabled and other uh, uh, pe vulnerable people. Uh, but Kerry doesn't think that that's enough to prevent him from supporting uh, the concept. Wow. Um, so you know we have all this. Uh, apparent medical technology at our fingerprints, but uh, fingertips. Sorry, but we want to uh, we want to use it to kill people as efficiently as possible, rather than uh, keeping them alive in in as uh, best a way as possible that they can actually enjoy being with their families for as long as possible. Don't yeah. quite understand it myself. Well, I'm I'm very happy to say I don't believe Kerry is a Christian. I don't believe he was a cr Christian. I think we're starting to see something else emerge from within the church. And perhaps we'll have a discussion on that over the coming weeks. So we'll end the programme today with um, black humour or not. But um, this was sent to us as each day goes by. It's getting harder to tell the difference between the Queen's Honours List and the Sex Offenders Register. Well, maybe there's some sort of link, really. Um, so, well, well, we still don't know who, who actually uh, put certain people forward for honours, do we?
So we don't actually know where that where Jimmy Savile's name came from in the first place. No, we well we don't we we're, we're not allowed to know because if we knew, well, of course, it'd be difficult to hide paedophile rings. But we'll get there in the end, <clears throat> and we'll end with this, which was uh, kindly sent into from the Shropshire Star. Apologies to the star. I think it may just be on the top of your screen there. A retired policeman from Shropshire is standing trial for historic sex offences against children. Uh, it's a pretty unpleasant um, uh, little text there about what's alleged this man is up to uh, while he was a policeman for some of the time, at least, in Merseyside. But uh, once again, um, it's all historic. This guy is 79 and uh, we're seeing this continual media spin. All of the abuse, of course, happened some years ago. It is not happening now, which is, um, as far as we're concerned, a total lie. Well, it just stopped in 1990. That's, that's clear. Stopped. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, can we end on the note that, aside from Robert Green, very brave campaigner, uh, trying to stop the abuse of children who's in his uh, Warrington home and house arrest. We've now also got very, very brave victim of Beechwood House, Nottingham, the children's home where she was raped and seriously physically abused. That lady is now in Peterborough prison on uh, so-called charges of arson. Did she get a fair trial? We don't know. Was she arrested with correct procedures? We don't know. Did she have uh, proper legal representation available with her? We don't know. What we do know is that she is on a path to be silenced because she experienced what went on at Beechwood House. So if you want to do something, perhaps you'd like to start with getting in touch with those uh, three Labour MPs who at the moment seem to know nothing really about Beechwood House or the 100 victims. Join us tonight, 7.30 for the Korean Report and 9 o'clock for um, Fracking Nightmare, ukcolumn.org slash live. And we're sorry about the drilling, whether it was MI5 installing new speakers or listening devices, we don't know, but we're going to continue transmitting television-like programmes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.